Hey everyone, so welcome to something a little different. We've recently added a new show for backers of the Digital Foundry Supporter Program. It's called DF Indirect, and the first 87 minute episode is available to all supporters right now. So if you love DF Direct, or more specifically its Q&A section, uh, you'll be in familiar territory. Uh, truth is, we get so many great supporter questions and discussion points each week that we just don't have the time to answer all of them, or else some of those questions or topics require further research before we can provide meaningful answers. And that's where the new indirect show comes in. Um, so yes, there'll be more chat, more answers, and possibly more laughs. Uh, the first show is out now on digitalfoundry.net, or it's available as a podcast on our supporter-only feed. So please do consider checking that out. But now, strictly for promotional purposes, here's the first 15 minutes or so of the first episode, tackling the recently unearthed Sony upscaling patent. A good example of a question we couldn't answer on the day, needed a bit more time to look into. Uh, so we're aiming to produce indirect monthly or bi-monthly, not quite decided yet, and we're also looking into the possibilities of live streaming the recording session to supporters. But for now at least, enjoy the show and the excerpts that we're sharing today. Um, okay, so let's take a look at this first question from Darjar Co. I actually sort of just uh, paraphrased it down because it was essentially an essay about Sony's new upscaler. But yes, a, a patent did appear recently, which seemed to be... Uh, what some have considered to be Sony's idea for a new upscaling algorithm, which presumably would be uh, an evolution of checkerboarding, a competitor to DLSS, etc., etc., etc. I'm going to go to you first on this one, Alex, because, um, well, I read it through, didn't really quite understand the gist of it it just seemed a bit incoherent yeah um uh, i think we've both reached out to to developers who know what they're talking about when it comes to upscaling and and we're still not really none the wiser maybe you can talk us through what the content of this patent actually is but before that let's just point out that uh, a lot of companies produce a lot of patents only a small minority actually of them uh, of them actually turn into shipping right. products um, but yeah what do you make of this all right so content wise there's a couple of things that are described in it before i actually think what i think it says uh, there's, <laughs> there is uh, a variety of diagrams uh, that show off uh, kind of flow charts about the logic of what the ups, what, of what this is doing. Uh, okay. There's flow charts also describing different hardware that it can apply to, including VR computers, consoles, uh, streaming. I believe is another aspect. So a server could be doing this. They describe, uh, and then there's also example images of what is happening, even though they are reproduced in such a manner as to be almost illegible, to be honest with you. They, <laughs> they are they are bl they are monochrome, black, white, not even grayscale gradient images. OK, it is so awkward. OK, so, so what you're saying is there's no pi pixel peeping, <laughs> zero that. pixel peeping possible. I zoomed in <laughs> as far as I could. I got nothing out of this. Um, and so the general idea I actually think is best described by figure two in this patent. Uh, there are a variety of figures here, but figure two is a flow chart that describes, okay, an image is rendered with holes in it. And this is why it sounds a lot like checkerboarding in the first instance, because a checkerboard image is not a, you know, we say 1920 by 2160. It is not 1920 by 2160 in a normal, uh, in a normal, like all, all, it would be a weird aspect ratio, first of all, but it's the normal 16 by nine aspect ratio, but it's missing every other pixel essentially. That's why it's yes. half resolution. So it looks like a checkerboard it's missing. And the original checkerboard re uh, technique utilized the previous frame uh, to essentially fill those gaps uh, you, temporally over time and those areas where it missed there would be a number of compensation techniques used to fill the holes in a certain way so it is not so distracting uh, checkerboarding could fall apart depending upon the title when movement occurred but it was all you know there was some really good implementations and other less good ones etc okay so in this technique they already start off in the beginning by saying there's an image rendered with holes in it 
And in the flow chart, uh, they essentially describe that depending upon the size and or quality of the hole, and this is a weird thing to say, uh, they will use two different techniques to fill the hole. The first one described is an image-based technique where they say they take an average of the neighboring pixels as well as the average the average is influenced by the material id of the pixel uh and then they generate a what sounds like a spatial result actually like a spatial upscaled result then they describe a second one hole filling technique that based upon the quality and the size of the hole and the, the 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 metrics for describing what the quality and quantity of a hole is, as this described here, is so vague and so wishy-washy that you really won't get much out of this patent, I think, reading it. Uh, it I think it maybe has to do with how disocluded the, the pixel is, as in was it recently revealed. Uh, mm. I think that's mainly what it's about. Uh, but I, you could also interpret it a different way. Uh, but basically, the second technique that is used for hole filling, a la checkerboarding, uh, would be machine learning inferencing. And they describe using two different types of a network to do this uh, that can be done. And then they describe it as a higher quality result than the other lesser scale that they did, which sounds like a spatial upscaler that is influenced by material ID. And in the end, it produces a full image. Now, there's a couple things that I found very intriguing about this. Um, one is the impact on hardware design, where if this is using a uh, hardware ID buffer like the PS4 Pro and what also the PS5 in it has in it, which was uh, one of the things developers could use to implement checkerboarded rendering, essentially a way to identify those pixels more accurately uh, of yeah. what they belong to. Uh, if it is using that, then this technique might be leveraging it. Another aspect in terms of hardware design that I found intriguing was uh, they purposefully in the in the patent describe the uh, the second technique being used as in the machine learning inferencing technique to fill a hole as um, being selective as to which holes it will fill uh, to reduce the, the the strain on the hardware uh, and that is interesting because uh, in terms of hardware design because they nvidia can afford as a dedicated gpu manufacturer to spend die space and also separate die space in the sm to make a tensor core that shares all these other resources with the processor but uh, as console manufacturer they may not have that and they may not actually have the r d to develop something like a tensor core but with rdna3 they would get um instructions that help accelerate uh, uh, certain aspects of machine learning, but they would still be decidedly slower than, for example, a dedicated tensor core. This, essentially, if they are being selective about the areas which machine learning is applied, uh, let's say like cutting it by like a fourth, for example, by just being more selective of the quality and the quantity, um, they could get around the fact that they don't have machine machine learning inferencing hardware in there uh, by essentially just reducing the amount of pixels that are being worked on. Uh, it would lead to a technically less quality, less quality, and that's why they have this flow chart describing different levels of quality. But I think that is very, very interesting, That and it's a way for them to get maybe machine learning in there if the GPU is RDNA3, uh, and still with all the constraints that RDNA3 has, but actually making it practical for... Uh, for a game load, which is something uh, that I don't think they could otherwise do unless they had a tensor core in there, uh, as shown uh, kind of by uh, Intel's uh, foray into machine learning upscaling with XESS, where the XMX version of that could never run on something like RDNA 1 or 2, especially RDNA 1. Um, but, you know, like a lessened version that's working on less pixels, I could see that as something much more viable, actually. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Uh, anything to add to that, Oliver? I mean, that was a pretty comprehensive breakdown. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure as to. Well, I think the thing is, we've got no idea really of of its of the quality of the output here based on the figures. Yeah. You'd think it would have to produce something that's better than FSR two at this point. I'd I'd have to assume that there's like some 
serious research and development behind this. But to me, just reading through the patent, it kind of sounded like a bit of a grab bag of different <laughs> buzzwords, at least to me. And it might be describing, like I, I could totally imagine describing a, a, a technique that's in development for you know a future console or future technology. But it also could just be a bit of a grab bag of IP to maybe ward off competitors or prove that they just have a patent that's related to upscaling. I mean, people right. file patents all the time for sometimes legitimate reasons and sometimes frivolous reasons, right? So I wouldn't read too much into it. And I didn't really see anything beyond what Alex said that could lead specifically to certain hardware implementations. Like it's not going to that degree of like to the metal specificity, right? It, it wouldn't, no. right? So it's not really yeah. something you can read into at that level. Mm -hmm. at, at yeah. The, the furthest it goes is just says like this device has RAM, this device <laughs> has a CPU. I Are thought that really? was funny. Yeah. Wow. Um, what? What? One last thing that I thought was interesting about it though is it sounded very checkerboard like, but it yep. didn't seem to describe like a previous frame from which the comparisons are done. Uh, at all right. or, or integrated okay. from, which was a little That's confusing to me. Uh, and problematic. Yeah, th or at least maybe I misunderstood it, but I didn't see that. And that is what's what confused me about this whole thing about whether it's even meant for games. Because the way DLSS works in its 2.0 variant is it it is essentially doing the ML part of it isn't the thing like generating pixels. It's more like fitting the previous frame pixels better than a hand tuned heuristic could. And the disocclusion areas, I actually don't know what NVIDIA does for them uh, because I don't think they've described that ever, but this sounded much more like generative AI on those pixels almost, unless we're trying to fit temporal data, which is why I wondered if it was actually designed for games and not for something else. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So there's no idea who's actually filed this patent, whether what part of the Sony group they're a part of. Uh, oh God. Uh, I actually don't know. <laughs> well, I didn't like. I looked. At, I I looked at everything except for the author. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, I've just looked at the author, the inventors, uh, and um, yeah, basically, it's. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it looks like people who work at the Great Marble Street um, Sony office, which is a bit uh, sort of sensitive topic at the moment, bearing in mind Sony has just shut down the entire London studio. I'm right. not sure if Jeez. they're actually based in Great Marble Street. That's where their main admin centre is, I believe. Um, but I'm not aware of these guys. I'd have to do some Googling on them to see what they've been up to in the past. Um Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it does look like an, it's definitely an SIE thing. So it's definitely uh, uh, related to, to, to gaming or gaming hardware, it seems. Um, the thing is, right, Alex, that checkerboarding, well, here's the thing, right? Checkerboarding, I think, has proven itself in the right hands to actually be a pretty decent um, solution. The limitation always being, of course, that essentially it's not producing, you know, um, a 4x Right. scaling in the way that like DLSS performance or FSR2 performance modes do. It's more of a, you know, a 2x rather than a 4x solution. And the whole point of these second generation upscalers is that in theory, you're supposed to be getting great results from, you know, an internal 1080p image going up to 4k. Um, do you think that that is actually what this would deliver? Uh, uh, based upon the fact that they say hole filling and the images did look like a standard checkerboard as in one pixel gone, one pixel missing, it did seem to be only a 2x scale based upon the images that were shown right. there. Uh, but which they also described no the, the size of the holes, which is a little bit of a confusing phrase to me. Uh, right. Because then it's not ordered like an ordered grid checkerboard anymore at that point. So mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's not really too much more we can add to this because there does seem to be a lot of missing detail in there. Uh, certainly intriguing, but I'm not seeing a game-changing technology that would make its way into a pro console. I don't know what you think. Uh, potentially, I mean, it, potentially. you came up with a, a series of scenarios where it could potentially fit on an RDNA three style device. Yeah, th that's what I said. And uh, I guess, I guess the one thing though is that one aspect of checkerboard rendering that developers didn't uh, like was essentially that it fit you into that ordered grid scheme, 
and you couldn't uh so you like if you did want to drop resolution you'd have to drop entire output resolution as well too that's why you saw mm -hmm. things like in horizon forbidden west something like 800p checkerboarded instead of being checkerboarded up from a lower resolution to 4k which doesn't exist so i think i think the idea of checkerboarding has in itself been a little bit superseded by something yes. that allows for more variable input uh and also one that is not attached to being like perfect that ordered grid of what the end rendered output is yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay fair enough i mean if we go back all the way to the original tom, tom henderson rumor there was talk of uh, 8k performance modes <laughs> uh, yeah d don't think so not with this <laughs> i don't think that sounds very really realistic <laughs> <laughs> no i think i think our reaction to that all along has been well how about a 4k performance mode right. first of all <laughs> Or 1440p um, performance mode for that matter. <laughs> well, yeah. For that matter, depending on the title, geez. Yeah. <laughs> I do think, you know, I do think there is some uh, weight in having some kind of intermediate upscaling solution for a generation, so for a console of this generation. But next generation, I think they're just going to be doubling down on AI mm. um, to do, you know, to do much more than just uh, upscaling, although that's clearly going to be an important part of it.